Hello, everybody. I'm Sam Shabilsky, and myself and my partner, Joe Anderson, are part of Marquette University's Applied Investment Management Program. Today, I'll be pitching the international materials company, Linus Rare Earth, ticker L-Y-S-C-Y, as a buy towards the International Equity Fund. Linus Rare Earth engages across its entire vertical supply chain in its production of rare earth minerals. That includes the exploration, development, mining, and processing of the minerals. The firm currently mines in Australia and refines in Malaysia, but they plan on building processing plants in Australia and in the U.S. in the coming years. The firm generates sales across various regions, from Asia Pacific with 35% of revenues to the Americas with 32 and Europe with 26. However, a large portion of those sales are attributed to the U.S. at 25% and China at 18%. The company was founded by Nicholas Anthony Curtis in May 1983 and is headquartered in Malaysia. Now on to the recommendation. Linus operates, mines, and processes heavy rare earth metals that have a wide range of uses. Some uses and application include heavy batteries, turbines, car motors, oil refining, aircraft engines, headphones, infrared technology, nuclear reactors, and various medical applications. Due to the vast variety of uses for their minerals, Linus shields itself from the potentially volatile cycles of individual products. Linus is the largest wholesaler outside of China of rare earth minerals, themselves having a 6.75% global market share on China having over 85%. And this is crucial as countries look to take China's control of the minerals away. Linus is well positioned to take advantage of the growing technology market, which is supported for greater demand for their products and expanding their country relations, which will increase their market share. For much of Linus's corporate life, they have had a relatively stagnant firm that was content to live off the commodity cycle. However, in the last five years, they've expanded in volume by taking their operations to new countries to both the U.S. and continuing in Australia. Through this expansion, the firm has embodied more of the vertical supply chain, leading to cost savings and better influence over the commodity cycle. Additionally, these expansions have created new and better relationships with the Australian and U.S. governments, both of whom look to decrease China's dominant control in rare earth mineral market. These government relations will be consistent in long-term partners whose demand will be resilient when it comes to the commodity cycle. For these reasons, it is recommended that Linus be added to the AIM International Fund with a price target of $7.55 and a potential upside of 28%. Now on to my investment drivers. The expansion of operational capabilities. Linus is in the process of growing the company threefold by finishing the expansion of rare earth processing in Calgary, Australia, building a new rare earth processing facility in the U.S., and continuing to discover new deposits at their Mount Weld mine. In July, Linus was awarded a $15 million grant from Australia to cover approximately 15% of the implementation costs of Linus's first homegrown rare earth carbonate refining processing facility. A $200 million annual increase in cost savings and, and operational output is expected. This is expected by 2023. Additionally, in February, the U.S. granted Linus $30 million to finance their processing plant to be built in Texas. And this is going to garner cost savings through the new advanced technology being implemented and the closer relationship with the U.S. government. Finally, as Linus continues to explore and drill deeper into and around Mount Weld, company officials are excited about the growth potential of the mine, and this is going to accompany the ever-increasing of demand for the minerals quite well. Now on to the green catalyst. The primary min mineral produced by Linus is neodymium and Praseodymium NDPR, which are used to create the strongest types of rare earth magnets. These enable the conversion of electrical energy into motion through the permanent magnet motors, which are one of the leading green technologies in not just electric vehicles, but also industrial processes and wind turbines. These motors are going to act as global catalysts uh, as firms transition into the green industrial processes in order to meet their sustainability goals in the coming years. Linus is currently the leading supplier of NDPR in Japan, and that is expected to pick up in multiple other marketplaces. As the green technology and sustainability marketplace increases at a CAGR of 26.6 through 2025. 
Lastly, the favorable market conditions right now in many tailwinds. Some of the major product markets Linus Minerals are used for are expected to grow at double digit rates in the coming years and will directly influence the demand for the and price for the minerals. A larger industry served is the overall automotive market, which will grow by 5% in the coming years. Additionally, EV has increased by 160% in the first half of 2021 and from a year prior and expected to continue growing at a 33% CAGR through 2027. Furthermore, key products NDPR and NDFEB are expected to grow in demand near 10% annual sales from 2020 to 2030. Lastly, because Linus resides outside of China, it is well positioned to take advantage of the trade disputes between China and other countries, namely Australia, and increase their market share. Now onto the valuation. In order to reach an intrinsic value for Linus Rare Earth, a five-year DCF was constructed with a mean terminal growth rate of 2% and a WAC of 10.66 was reached and an intrinsic value of $7.42 was assessed. Through stress tests on the Rare Earth forecast, an intrinsic price range of $6 to $9 was reached. Additionally, a relative PE and an EV to EBITDA valuations were assessed to aid in the valuation, a multiple of 1.28 times and 1.35 times resulted in the relative valuations of 7.56 and 7.95, respectively, for the ratios. And the peer group used was weighted based on their operational income similarities between the firms, and by weighting these valuations 70.15.15, a price target of $7.55, an upside of 28% was reached. The first risk is the denial of licenses and approvals. Operations are dependent on approved licenses and granted permission from governments. As operations continue to expand globally, there is no guarantee of their continued statutory approvals and renewals. Most depend on ESG compliance. Any delays in approvals may cause decreased production or profits. Next, commodity fluctuations may affect revenues as pricing of products are dependent on the current materials prices, which are heavily influenced by supply and demand. As such, profits can vary due to the commodity cycle. Lastly, China holds over 85% of the market share of rare earths. The Chinese government is deeply involved with the firms and has shown no hesitation to cut annual quotas or use of other methods to, to manipulate the price of the rare earths minerals. China has issued a quota on rare earths in the past, causing supply to drop and prices to surge. Amanda Lacaze is the managing director and CEO of Linus since 2014. She is also currently a member of the Minerals Council of Australia and has more than 25 years of senior operational experience. The CFO, Gondes Sturzenegger, has worked in numerous GM and CFO positions with General Motors worldwide. Four of the six board of director members are independent. Additionally, 50% of the members are female. Lastly, Linus is a growing company who is primed to benefit from the increased rare earth demand tailwinds and has created long-term relationships with powerful governments. If you have any questions or you want to reach out, please contact me at the email provided on the slides. Thank you.